All right, I'm live. I didn't get the countdown. Should probably unmute my computer. Good morning. Happy last week of school. We're here. Let's just finish strong. Awesome. Yes. Lesson four. I've um the day of commandment. So this chapter six is covered in two parts. Commandment number six. And then we did seven at the end of last week. Today, we're going to do eight. And by today, I mean Monday, Tuesday. Quiz, Wednesday, Thursday. Then Friday, you're going to get one last lecture from yours truly. So that's the lineup. Three things this week. We're going to do commandment number eight today. Um, quiz on Socrative uh, will be posted soon. And then last lecture. But first, a dad joke, which is very related to this commandment. Very proud of this. Have you heard the rumor going around about butter? Never mind. I shouldn't spread it. All right. Here we go. There is no um, Socrative or Ed puzzle for this lesson. I'm just going to try to track y'all through the classroom to see who's seen it or not. Of course, you need this information for your quiz next class. Once again, the quiz will cover commandments 6, 7, and 8. Here we go. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I didn't know what that meant, to bear false witness uh, until I was like, I don't know, 13. Um, to testify wrongly um, in a way that hurts your neighbor. So the principle of this commandment says, you know, speak the truth. Um, this is a very hard commandment to follow, especially in your years where you're trying to scoot around your parents. A lot of y'all, I know I was at your age. Um, that's the stereotype of most teenagers. Um, you shall not bear false witness. It's very easy to commit this, uh, to break this commandment. Um, but if you can understand a little bit more of why uh, why it is a commandment, the principle behind it, it might help you follow it a little bit better, but probably not. Why are we bound to tell the truth? Why why does God expect you to tell the truth all the time? You know, man tends by his nature towards the truth. He is obliged to honor and bear witness to the truth that comes from God. Okay, why? It is in accordance with their dignity. Once again, you've you've heard in all these commandments, you heard it in chapter one of this semester. It's about human dignity. By our dignity, uh, because we are persons, dot dot dot, we are both impelled by our their nature, our nature, and bound by a moral obligation to seek the truth, especially religious truth. They are also bound to adhere to the truth once they come to know it and direct their whole lives in accordance with the demands of truth. So rewind to chapter one. I taught you that man being made in the image and likeness of God was made to know truth, to choose it, and experience love. That's what it means to be made in the image of God, to know, to choose, to love. Hopefully you remember that. Okay. Well, what this commandment is saying is because we were made for the truth, we are obligated morally to tell each other the truth. That is the principle behind this commandment. Um, that's very important um, that uh, we recognize um, in our day and age that we were made for the truth. A lot of people, we talked about moral relativism. A lot of people they don't even believe there is a truth to be obtained a uh, truth to be sought after and if that's if that's the case then certainly lying is not wrong according to that you know philosophy because there's there's nowhere else for you to go so um there's no truth to be had so you can tell lies all day because everything's a lie uh as christians as catholics we don't believe that there's a truth in god and because of that we have to tell the truth whether it's where you were saturday night or tell the truth regarding, you know, does this dress make me look fat? Do you have to tell the truth there? 
You have to tell a truth there. All right. Common offenses, ways to break the Eighth Commandment. It's not just lying, of course. So that's it. Um, this becomes lying because, uh, under oath is called perjury. Uh, from the catechism here, false witness and perjury. When it is made publicly, a statement contrary to the truth takes on a particular gravity. In court, it becomes false witness. When it is under oath, it's perjury. So when somebody takes a stance, says, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. They take that hand on the Bible. They sit down and they tell a lie. That's perjury. That is the most very grave, very serious form of lie. And that's, I just want you to know what that term means. Perjury is lying under oath. Um, you all know that's wrong. I just want you to know that term because you will see it uh, as you read the news for the rest of your life. Uh, respect for the reputation of persons forbids every attitude and word unlikely to cause them unjust injury. Likely to cause them unjust injury. You become... The human person, you and I, are guilty of breaking the Eighth Commandment when we make a rash judgment. So just you have to have this general respect for people. I know the fact that you're lying to them or about them or, or gossiping about them um, it means you probably don't like them. But you're obligated to not make a rash judgment. So you think you see something where somebody is guilty. Um, the catechism is teaching us don't just assume okay don't assume somebody did something wrong don't assume the worst about them do not make a rash judgment um, because when you assume something about somebody else you could be making in your head a lie you need hard evidence before you act or even think about something until you have the hard factual evidence, you want to assume the best. Well, maybe they just forgot about me. Um, maybe um, maybe something came up. Assume the best. Don't make a rash judgment. I promise you, you will cut the drama in your lives in half if you can try to assume the best and then work it out from there. <laughs> Detraction slash gossip uh, without objectively valid reason discloses another person's faults and failings to persons who did not know them. So if um, I don't know if I uh, if I were talking to my wife about one of y'all, my students, oh, this student is just negative and I throw out all the all these all these nasty words about you and I probably don't even know you uh too well to say that it's just gossip you know um not saying I do that really don't think I do um but um if you are going to tell somebody somebody's fail somebody somebody else's failings you have to have a legit reason to do so you can't just say it Okay. Um, when would be a reason to tell about somebody's failures? Well, maybe um, the boss man uh, says, hey, I want to hire so-and-so. Do you think that they would be a good employee of mine? And you say, um, I do like that person. They're very nice and sweet, but they're always late. You know, I have to tell you this. You're not gossiping. You're just helping to make that boss make the right decision on who to hire. That's not, that's not gossip. There's, there's a constructive way to do that. Of course, most of the negative talk about people is probably gossip. And uh, this is, uh, I want to add one more thing about gossip. Okay. Gossip is never going to leave y'all. As you go to college, as you get out of college and get in the workplace, there are certain like social sins that are going to leave y'all. You know, they're not going to be as popular. A lot of you are going to get tired of drinking and partying. And, um, you, you know, you're going to realize that having sex outside of marriage um, it just creates more problems. and isn't the love that you seek in life. You're going to realize these things if you don't if you don't take my word for it. So 
a lot of these sins are going to fall away, you know. Gossip is one of those sins. It's always going to be around. You need to learn how to handle it. You need to learn how to respond to it. You have to control your tongue. All right. Uh, do that with some prayer and fasting. All right. Let's uh, see what Jesus says about lying. Um, a lie. This is still from the catechism. A lie consists in speaking a falsehood with the intention of deceiving. The Lord denounces lying as the work of the devil. And this is Jesus' words. You are of your father, the devil. There is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So Jesus, you know, he spoke very intensely about a lot of sins that we've talked about this year. But here's his quote uh, about lying. If you live a life of lies, you're, you're cooperating with the devil. The devil lives off of lies. He fed Eve lies uh, and tricked her into, you know, sinning against God. Lying is uh, the, is his number one mode of op, mode of op, operating. Modus operandi is what it's called. Um, so the Jesus associates lying, the sin of lying specifically with the devil. That's how serious uh, it can be. By its very nature, lying is to be condemned. The deliberate intention of leading a neighbor into error by saying things contrary to the truth constitutes a failure in justice and charity. I want you to know it's those two things. I already told you that the human person deserves the truth because we were made for the truth. But if you love somebody, you're not going to tell them a lie. If you love somebody adequately enough, you're not going to tell them a lie. All right, so it's justice and charity. It's a serious failure. It's a serious issue. Some lies are more serious than others. Um, but hopefully, you know, you see the biblical principle and the reasons why. Last slide. Do we have to always, always tell the truth? Going back to the does this dress make me look fat question. The right to communication of the truth is not unconditional. Everyone must conform his life to the gospel precept of fraternal love. This requires us in concrete situations to judge whether or not it is appropriate to reveal the truth to someone who asks for it. So the answer, you might be surprised by the question, my answer to the question on top of the screen, do we always have to tell the absolute truth? The answer is no. You have to judge whether the truth you would tell this person is going to be appropriate, beneficial, or is necessary or not necessary for them to know. Um, there's, um, let me see what this next one is. Okay. There's um, a story I like to tell from my first year of teaching. Um, the students wanted information from his girlfriend. So he's dating, I believe it was um, a junior dating a sophomore girl many years ago. And this uh, junior boy, of course, loved his girlfriend but did not get along with the girlfriend's best friend. So poor girlfriend was always stuck between boyfriend and best friend fighting and really didn't like each other. Boyfriend says to girlfriend, I heard that your best friend said something mean about me. I want to know what she said. Girlfriend replies, no. Yes, believe it or not, this relationship did not work out. Girlfriend says no. And boyfriend comes to me while I'm teaching this lesson, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago. And girlfriend, um, well, boyfriend says to me in class, Mr. Peo, she has to tell me the truth, right? Like, that's a Christian thing. You have to tell the truth. And I thought about it, and I said, no, she doesn't. Because 
If she tells you what her best friend said about you and it pisses you off and you fight even more, she can judge that situation to say, I'm not going to tell you because it's not beneficial. It's not for the greatest good. Okay? So you have to judge whether or not you, you reveal it to and so on. Now, I do have, I should add that your parents just about always deserve the truth. You can't say, oh, mom and dad is better that you don't know. No, you're their kid. You live under the roof. Don't try to stretch that. Don't try to use that as an excuse. So, oh, I, I don't love for you. I'm not going to tell you. Carefully. Don't use this as an excuse. Just know that um, you're bound to charity and love. And, of course, you want to limit the drama in your life, hopefully. So, uh, for those reasons, um, you need to adequately judge when, where, and who you tell the truth to. Other reasons to not tell the truth is the safety of others. You know, start a fight um, by telling the truth to somebody. Um, you know, try to make somebody, if you know something that's very personal against somebody, uh, maybe you don't tell them because you want them to try to live uh, uh, because it wouldn't help them. It would just make them feel you know, more sad about their life. Respect for privacy and the common good are reasons for being silent about what ought not be known or for making use of discreet language. Um, so for the common good, um, this is why every organization from the Diocese of Lafayette to Turner's Catholic High School to the United States of America government to the Vatican and to all, every organization has secrets, you know? And it stinks, and there's all these great conspiracy theories about, you know, what goes into those secrets. But um, the Catechism says um, that, you know, these secrets have a purpose, you know? to protect certain people, to limit misinformation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the duty to avoid scandal often commands strict discretion. No one is bound to reveal the truth to someone who does not have the right to know it. Okay. So you're not bound to tell the truth always, always, always. Let yourself be, be guided by love, the common good, the safety of others. And, um, I hope your conscience leads you in the right direction. That's the uh, Eighth Commandment in a nutshell. Quiz next class, and then one last lecture at the end of the week. From Robert to Louisiana, on behalf of Turlins Catholic High School, this is Mr. John Pelletti. God bless.